Willkommen, this is Julia. And this is Shane. Und this is Think Plant Based. Think Plant Based. Make sure to check out recipes, health tips, travel tips at www.thinkplantbased.com. And we're officially on iTunes, so please rate and write us a review on iTunes. Write us a review. Give us two stars, three stars, maybe five stars. <laughs> Let us know. Oh, for sure, Let's, five. Yeah, I mean, who would give us two stars anyways, yeah. right? <laughs> But yeah, make sure to do that because that's how we get found. Want to learn more about the fundamentals of a plant-based diet? Well... Myself and Julia had a great opportunity to be guest speakers at the Life Mastery Foundation's Plant-Based Diet Online Summit. This summit is 100% free to watch live online with the ability to purchase unrestricted on-demand access to all the sessions. With over 26 experts in the expertise of a plant-based lifestyle, you won't want to miss it. Sign up now. You don't want to miss our talk, Becoming a Better You on a Plant-Based Diet, on April 22nd at 1 p.m. Pacific Time. The link is in the show notes and on our Instagram page at Think Plant Based. Stay healthy. Stay motivated. See, See you, you there. guys there. Here we are. Yeah, we're always here. Fitness is so important, right? It's not just about food, right? How about you, Shane? Yeah, no, you got to have good fitness routine to uh, keep healthy and keep you. Yeah, yeah right? keep you going. And we have an expert here. Hi, Maria. Maria, how you doing? <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys. So Hi. nice to meet you. Th thank you for having me on here. Well, yeah, thanks for your pleasure. time. Yeah, thanks for your time. <laughs> we know you're so busy and um, dealing with so many clients, and we're so blessed to have you on our show and talk about Aww. fitness. Mm -hmm. So sweet. <laughs> yeah, so tell listeners a little bit more about yourself and uh, what you do. Sure, Absolutely. Um, okay, so since this is a, a vegan podcast, I'm um, definitely going to start with that. So sure, I went yeah. vegan. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, I went vegan uh, in uh, 2015 in September, and it was one of those um, more in instantaneous um, shifts, I would say, because I had um, been like toying with the idea of, um, you know, exploitation and you know what the food system um really is and how much uh, is hidden from us in terms of the sources and in terms of uh, what is actually done in practices like to get us the food that we see in supermarkets and so i had stopped um buying meat for my own cooking and meal prep for years before that but i was still somewhat addicted or um very Uh, attached to like eggs and and uh, just milk and so even though I wouldn't say I was a vegetarian I would say that I was um, not able to just let go of some of the, like the last bits right. before I could fully switch to ve veganism mm -hmm. um, yeah and so it wasn't until I met somebody who um, was like a hardcore activist that He's, he's my ex now, but then back, back then he was just someone who um, entered into my life that I now recognize as a catalyst. And uh, he asked this really, really um, poignant question um, that just said, you know, if you, if you want to say you're a good person, then, you know, every meal you have a day, like you contribute to some of the worst suffering in the world. So how can those two, you know, how can those two, exist together right and so and so when i saw that it was on facebook and so that night i just went vegan wow. and uh yeah it's really powerful the, the things that we each of us say and the you know every little bit counts right so you never know what kind of impact it might have on somebody else yeah right and every everyone has a different impact to words you know like it yeah, impacts absolutely. you but some people think oh Everyone else yeah. is meeting, eating meat. Why should I quit? Everyone else is doing yeah. it. So. And, and mm -hmm. so, I mean, he wasn't the first vegan I had met. I had also made friends with this girl online who was from L.A. Um, and I, I had never met her in person, but she was always posting and, you know, just like really opening my eyes and, and bringing that awareness to, you know, just really questioning everything that um, like how I was living before. So that was a really... Um, I was really grateful for, for people like that, for sure. 
Right. And you were always into fitness or even before being even vegetarian, right? Was it always um, a passion of yours? You know what? I never thought of it as a passion. It's so funny because as I was growing up, like I'm, I'm Chinese, right? And like fitness is definitely not a, like, it's not prominent in Chinese culture at all. Like I didn't even know what a personal trainer was up until I was in my mid twenties. And so I, like, I, I went, I started going to the gym when I was like in grade 12, like grade, yeah, about grade 12. So I was about 17 or so, like 16, 17. I just went to the gym because we had it in gym class. And then I was just had some friends who wanted to go and then we just kind of were like, we're dicking around, you know, like doing whatever you have no idea what you're doing. And then I just kept doing, like kept going to the gym and from like that age, like now, now I'm 33. So it's been over a decade for sure. And, um, And I, I, I just, uh, I, I guess it became a, a, a just a very um, um, constant part of my life. You know, when something is just like, you know, you just turn to it just right. because you don't even have to question whether or not it's good or it's bad for you. It's just something that you just naturally tend to do. But uh, in terms of becoming a trainer, like, yo, I, I didn't even know what that was before oh. until I, yeah. Wow. Like until I was in my mid twenties, and then I. So this is like the. They're all very related to the people I have dated. So this is the ex I um, I had before um, my my vegan cat catalyst, and he is a trainer. Him and I are still really good friends, and he um, opened my eyes in another really powerful way to how living um, your life like following the crowd and doing the nine to five and, you know, just making a paycheck and not really pursuing what fulfills you or not pursuing, you know, just looking at your, your job as something to make money and pay the bills with. Um, he opened my eyes to the fact that like that does not have to be the only possibility. Right. And yeah. like when, when I was working, um, when, okay. So when I was with him, I was working as a, uh, as a technical editor And I was naturally just good at that work because I had uh, read, like, so in instead of watching TV as a kid, I would just read and I would like read thousands of books over my childhood. And right. it was just naturally something that was very, um, like, easy to do. I would look at text and I would be able to edit it for errors and stuff like that. Nice. And yeah, I know, super, like, a very Great skill. Like, <laughs> yeah, yes. just naturally. Yeah, like, a lot of there, there's a it. comma missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so when I finished university, I came out with an arts degree in philosophy, and that's essentially useless. So I had to go back to school <laughs> and then get, you know, you know what oh, I mean, yeah. right? You're yeah. like, oh, yeah. hi. <laughs> no one wants me. <laughs> I don't even know what I have to offer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So know, you right? went back to school, then what did you study? Well, uh, yeah, so I studied technical writing, like documentation, because that's naturally what um, I was good at, and it was something that could translate over to multiple in industries. So I was like, okay, well, even if, you know, like this industry might be going down or whatever, that can just move those skills over. It's very transferable. Right. Um, yeah, but then I, I got this job and it was in North Van. So if you can imagine, like I was driving from Richmond to North Vancouver, like oh every my. day. Oh. For, for, That's like, quite a commute. Oh, in the yeah. traffic. Even Richmond yeah, to Vancouver man. can be oh. a commute over the bridges if there's an accident yeah. or something. Like Now you have to go over two, bridges. yeah, two or three bridges. Like, oh, bridges. yeah, it's a <laughs> lot of freaking bridges. And uh. this is stop, go traffic. It's, and I drive manual, so that messed oh, up my back. Oh, no. You... Yeah, man, it, was, it, was a, <laughs> it was just <laughs> Hardcore. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so, um, so I was doing that job, and it was like, and like I developed like carpal tunnel like syndromes like within the first three months oh, no. of working there because the. Can you explain um, what it is yeah, for the for listeners um, and, and for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so, um, uh, well, okay, carpal tunnel is like nerve damage in the wrist, like specifically um, in the nerve canal. Right. Uh, there's uh, the bundle of nerves that run from like through the forearms and then like down to all your uh, met metacarp metacarpals. So all your mm -hmm. fingers, um, each of them like has, you know, nerve pathways. And so with um, like thousands of repetitive movements in a certain cramped position, especially for women, because we have smaller wrists usually, yeah. then you can, then you can start to stunt or to uh, impact the nerve health because you're constantly pressing upon it. 
like oh. when you're typing and right. you're constantly moving in that constricted motion oh. then uh it causes like nerve damage and so i started to be unable to like the the my one of my thumbs like the thumb has started to deteriorate like the flesh started to kind of like um like shrink because oh, wow. i wasn't getting the blood flow to it and then i i couldn't like and then my hand started to get into like claws and i still have it now like i'm you know just trying to manage it now right but, how do you uh, do it with the, uh, like the f exercising and stuff when you weight lift like is it hard like do you feel it um yeah you definitely feel it but i feel it most when i have to hop on the computer uh, because uh, that's the like it's literally just the move whatever movement caused it will be what aggravates and what like worsens it oh, so I right see. yeah yeah did no. you feel any improvement by going vegan at all you know oh. what everything um went everything improved overall like my my health overall it um it got like like because you you you, you cut out the sources of inflammation right and right. um nerve damage would have uh would would be inflamed like would would be in, in like a like a type of inflammation and so overall it did but i didn't notice anything where like my wrists are magically healed but right. overall my body just felt like it was superhuman especially the, the first few months after i went fully vegan yeah. it was uh yeah it was pretty magical nice. and the the word that i would use to um describe it was buoyant like i literally felt lifted like my now looking back like you know four and a half years ago like it felt like i was uh in a different frequency. Yeah, right. That's yeah. what I felt. Yeah. yeah, you're resonating right? differently and like yeah. yeah, it's weird. Like eliminating like death and suffering and all these horrible things from your own energy field at least. Right. Yeah, right. I even felt so more powerful. spiritual, you know, for some yeah. reason like I really felt <laughs> more like wow, I feel like I'm I know why I'm here on this planet, you know? Like things <laughs> yes, make more sense exactly. to me. Exactly. And thinks oh I'm God. one to the flow and stuff like that. And yes. it's not like the hippy dippy type of thing, you no, know, but I really feel truly. like I'm more in tune oh with what God. I'm doing, you know, with my actions yes. and my mm. thoughts. You're more, and, you're more oh conscious God. for sure. You are. Of yes. everything that you do. Holy and shit. and yes, you feel absolutely. actually more connected how animals feel, you know, like oh I watched my God. this documentary oh. with Joaquin Phoenix yesterday, how he rescued yeah. this um, calf mm -hmm. and the mo mother cow. And I don't know, I just got so emotional. Like, I haven't seen this. I usually don't really watch too much of this stuff anymore. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's it just like, it's it made me cry. Hard. On the other hand, I was so happy that he's rescuing yeah. these um, cows. Aww. But then I'm like, what about the male cows? You know, they get left behind. It broke my heart because yeah. there's so many that are left behind. And we can, yeah. we can only rescue so many. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yes. There's like millions billions right now and 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 yeah so like try like yeah turning your focus to anything like that for me i i i have to kind of like stop myself from thinking about all the like right now this very minute what is happening across the world in slaughterhouses like dog farms like you know traps there's so much going on and so yeah everything you said like hit the nail on the head because um, yeah, definitely the, the consciousness, the, the awareness, like the interconnectedness, like it's, it's like it, ha I guess for people, it doesn't necessarily have to link with spirituality. You can, you know, like just abstain from, from ex like exploiting animals, like for various reasons and not necessarily take it to the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I feel like it really is so like intricately linked it it almost is a necessity because once you do that then like the power of your actions and the power of making like a conscious choice like that it like in and of itself would allow you to sort of um expand as a as a person like as a human being right like on this right. earth so yeah i yeah. think it's like similar you know like to give back to the to the uh -huh. world right like, you know, you go to a soup kitchen, help the poor, you know, you get that feeling you can't get with money, right? It's that, that, that high that of helping people that just glows. And I feel oh that when God. you go vegan and stuff like that, like, I just feel that I'm doing something right and something for the world. Yes. And it gives me yeah, that right? feeling, right? Of it. I'm a part, part of, of something that yeah. I know that's not doing as much harm. As, right, say, because life... Other. So. Life can be so selfish, right? If you think of it, but I think it we're can. here Absolutely. as a whole, right? With 
business and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Gratification, indulgence. Yeah. There's so many things where, and we're taught like we, we are conditioned by, you know, the, the society to, to aim to just buy, consume, gratify, eat chocolate, eat steak, (laughs) go and drink beer and escape. There's so many things that are not here for us to expand consciously. So, right. Right. Yeah. Very robotic. A lot of exactly. humans are, you wake up, go to work, you come home, you oh make dinner, you're God. tired, you go to sleep and you, that's how yeah. life is. That's, that's life. They have no other life, but yeah. just work and making yeah. money. And, and yeah, like, yeah. I don't think, you know, maybe there's <laughs> more to life. Maybe you can, you know, yeah, enjoy like, nature, go for a life? hike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Like, why are we here? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a reason why we go live like almost like, homeless people in the forest and go camping right <laughs> just, yeah. like it seems yeah. like weird that we make all this money is now nah, we don't we just want to go out and like not do anything with technology or anything like right. live, live like an animal yes. you know but it's just yeah. it's so pivotal to you know our our well-being and just being connected and being like mm-hmm. we said more conscious to the things mm-hmm. around us that control us yeah and the basics right sometimes it's really good to just live simple because our life became so much more complex right i mean even your lifestyle you know like we were talking about before the show like things get so hectic right and yeah like you have a very complex uh, lifestyle and your work right and then you even do competitions right Mm -hmm. can you talk about that more oh sure um yeah wow this is such a good talk (laughs) um, <laughs> this is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> such good topics right like we don't really get a chance to explore all these areas no, no, right. no this was time, that's really. the beauty of a podcast we're open yeah. to talk about everything where you know if you want to come on our yeah. podcast and talk about you know other sure. stuff sure yeah yep <laughs> um yeah so well right now it's uh it's 2020 and then the last um so okay so I, I've been a trainer. Um, I've owned a personal training business um, since 2014. And so it's been over five years. Oh, and congratulations. Then, oh, that's, that's excellent. Oh, thank you. Five-year <laughs> yeah, mark. A, that's the pivotal. So, yeah, not yeah. bankrupt yet. That's yeah. good. Um, so, like, usually people in the fitness industry, they, they kind of um, consider, or they toy around with, like, doing a competition, like, be it bodybuilding or powerlifting or weightlifting or whatever, right? Um, and so before I, I didn't really have any sort of inclination towards bodybuilding, like to step on stage for any reason, like not for myself, right? Like, you know, however I view my body is, <clears throat> is fine with me. I, I don't really need to sort of have someone else evaluate it or to compete against other people. Um, but when I, um, when I was, coming out of the relationship in about 2017 in that winter um i had a like a a a gym friend mention that he was thinking about competing and i was like you know what like if i compete because in vancouver there hasn't really been a a prominent um bodybuilding figure since samantha shorty and then she moved to uh the east coast Right. And I was like, you know what? There isn't really anybody doing this for the vegan movement here locally. And I thought, you know what? That would be a really worthwhile endeavor because I don't need to do stuff for myself. Like the universe takes care of me and, you know, but if I, if I could show my, my like me eating friends and, and um, network that, you know, you don't need to eat any eggs. You don't need to eat any steak. You don't need to eat no chicken breast um no milk nothing and then you can still go on stage and and then and still place hopefully um then that would be something that i would really want to do and then so um i started prep in march of uh, 2018 and then it was like a 16 or 20 week prep i think it was 20 weeks about five months Mm -hmm. and then um oh sorry six yeah it was 16 weeks anyway so i did uh my first show at the um BC Cup Natural Championships, and this is a local show, just kind of like entry level. Um, and it was freaking, it was, it was definitely a challenge because at that time I was expanding my business as well. So I also had to hire somebody. And plus, I had also set a goal for myself um, to buy my first place. And so I was like saving money like wow. mad and, you know, trying to like working like seven days a week. 
and then trying to hire and then trying to figure out how to like you know what to do as an employer like what the what that role like putting on that hat would would be right and right. so I was trying to juggle all these things and plus every day it was like a, a six day bodybuilding split so you have to wow. <laughs> do your warm up and then you have to do the actual weights and I had hired a, a, a coach like a cop a couple from uh, I think they're in Langley, and so I drove out to um, their gym every Sunday for posing class. And plus, I was doing research on my own, like studying like the elite, like the IFBB pros, um, because po- posing class isn't enough, right? Like you have to actually study what like the masters are doing, so you can just dominate. And so I was at the gym about three to three and a half hours a day, and then. Wow. That was in between Whoa. my morning clients and my evening clients, and I still had to cook and do the meal prep and then eat like mm. five times a day and then still um, figure out stuff with my accountant to um, to put money down and then uh, find a realtor. And then I, I, I was honestly, the, the universe just was like, it took care of everything that year because I literally set out the intention to um, have the perfect place fall into my lap in may i needed to because my I, I was still living with my family with my parents and then we had decided that we would all move out like we would all just uh move 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 away within a few months and so i had to get this rolling in motion and i didn't have another choice right. and so i so the universe like delivered exactly what i wanted in the area i wanted looking the way i wanted within two weeks and so i i I gathered all my money for the down payment down. And then, um, so that was taken care of. And then the um, perfect um, candidate for the job posting also appeared. And then, so that happened. And I started her in about, uh, I think, uh, May or June. And then, uh, and then I did my show and then, and then I got third place. Or sorry, I got second place. I got yeah, second congrats. place. Oh, yeah, yeah, congrats. Thank That's you. Because that was amazing. crazy. Yeah. Whoa. Yo, it What's... was. And I was like, wow, how is like but I I had this kind of like confidence from the universe. I felt like, you know what? He, like things are gonna be like things are gonna happen the way they're meant to happen. I'm doing this for a higher purpose. Yeah. And the results are almost detached from me. And I just have this like almost like a supreme confidence that it's gonna all work out. And then right. I got second, and and then the the girl that got first place, she had been competing for a few years, um, and so I, I was totally happy to not have gotten first because I know I didn't um, earn it, like I know I didn't deserve it, um, and so anyway, so that allowed me to um, move on to the next tier, like the next level of um, competition, and that was at the Van Pro qualifier. It was just two weeks later, and this is like. Wow. Um, where athletes from around the world fly in so there were people from like i think japan and various cities in the states and and so there it was pretty awesome um the same so that same girl who won first she got second and then the um first place winner was this girl who flew in from um the state somewhere with her coach and then i got third there and i was oh. like oh okay i'm done <laughs> that's enough <laughs> that's <starving. amazing. laughs> yeah i mean it's quite a uh I think people don't realize how, you know, they, like you said, starving wise to get that lean for competition is, you know, oh, they just yeah. think you walk around like that all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, they right. think that these bodybuilders just walk lean and like, you know, sub, yeah. sub double digit uh, percentages or, or whatever. But like the you reality what? is they're but not actually, walking around like that. Yeah. You know what? Actually though, I, I would have to say that ever since I became vegan, like, shedding fat and keeping it off has been super easy yeah. so easy yeah right especially because, when you're active like you are yeah like so before i started prep i was kind of like doing weights and i was also doing kickboxing and i was taking up jujitsu ju- ju- and i was already at about uh my coach looked at me and said i was about 15 60 percent body fat so pretty low back then and i started prep right. and i got down to like nine or ten Whoa. for the shows and Whoa. then i kind of like gained um like psychologically, I started to develop a bit of a disorder from just that starvation. Like, sorry, from that strict management. Right. And so I, yeah, started to eat more, obviously. And then now I've settled back down. And so it's not hard, honestly. Like, if you just put the time in, like, you do the most efficient uh, weight training program, 
just the most efficient, like high intensity, um, like big power output, lots of speed, lots of strength, lots of plyometrics. Like it's, it's very doable, very achievable for people who are on a plant-based diet to just build like a lean physique and then be able to maintain it. Right. Like, right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking on that, what what would you eat on like, say your typical oh prep kind of thing yeah, or when you're building muscle? I mean, obviously there's probably two different uh, eating styles there, but just maybe run down some of your favorite. Yeah. I guess people oh, always yeah. say, where do you get your protein from? But your oh favorite. My God, yeah. Uh, yeah. How do you stay strong? yeah. How do you stay strong on a vegan diet? <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, okay, you're already at an advantage if you're not eating inflammatory foods. So that's right. a big one. So yeah. your immune system isn't being constantly like constantly in a battle with like foreign um, foreign entities within the body. And I mean, okay, so I'm still in like the mock meats. Like I still love my um, my kind of meat alternatives. So during prep, I ate I um, I was eating tofurkey sausages every meal, <laughs> every meal that I was allowed to have. Like in a day, you stuff. mean every meal yeah. in a day? Yeah. Every every meal, yeah. So I would have like a like an oatmeal, um, like a like overnight oats as my breakfast with sausages. Have, <laughs> with so- oh oatmeal my god, no! <laughs> no, 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 this is, this is the, 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 the non sausage one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although that might not be a bad idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? Yeah, like a it savory wouldn't be my first salty. pick, but I'm not gonna <laughs> say maybe it's good. I don't know. You never know. I, I've never right. tried never it, know. so yeah, try. who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was, cause it was like a perfect, so every meal, like you, um, my coaches wanted me to hit about 30 grams of protein a day, sorry, a meal, every meal. So every meal I had to, um, hit about, yeah, 26 to 30 grams. And that was why the Tofurky sausages were so pivotal because they were about 26 to 30 grams. Uh-huh. And then everything and they're easy on to get down, right? Because they're they're, yeah. they're compact. They're yeah. very dense. Yeah, like, and they're like mm-hmm. flavorful. Yeah, so if I'm right? eating, you know, like just what what was I eating? Like just a bunch of like you know greens with it, and then some um like a like a half cup to a a third, like three quarter cup of um, some kind of grain. Um, that would essentially be my meal, like a bunch of vegetables. And then a little bit of my complex carbs, which still has protein in it. Right. And then my tofurkey sausage. So that was what I was doing on prep. And then, of course, I would have a couple of um, like protein um, smoothies with berries and like almond milk or soy milk. And then um, that was pretty much it. That was that was my prep life for a few months. Nice. So how many meals a day do you have around? For prepping? Uh, I, yeah, I for had... Prepping. Two um, of the savory meals with the sausages. I had two protein shakes, and then I had my breakfast oatmeal um, overnight oats yeah. thingy in a jar. Mm-hmm. And do you consume? And do you consume a lot of like caffeine to your work, like your trainings and stuff? Yeah, because if you're cutting, you're probably lower in energy, right? Usually, yeah, definitely, yeah. for sure, yeah. So and if everything something. is, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, actually my it's client, <laughs> so my, my, my clients told me like, like, I, like, uh, just a few months ago. So like a full year after my prep, but the, like one of them, they're, they're super sweet. They're like this like couple that's around my age and like, just like the sweetest people ever. And the guy was like, Oh Maria, I think now it's finally safe to tell you that when you were doing prep, you were really grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, it's not good to be, you know, in your body. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, hard. It's, it's in a calorie deficit. It's, you know, your your yeah. energy levels are low. You're you're not making the right. You're not eating the same amount your body needs, exactly. kind of to you're keep going as it. much. Exactly. It's, so, it's yeah. like a, it's like all this manipulation of sure. all these variables, and your mood, of course, suffers. Like yeah. it's hormones. hormones. Yeah, yeah. Er- everything is all yeah. related. Yeah, and you to sleep that. maybe too, right? So. It probably throws <laughs> oh, your sleep yeah. out too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So things are not flowing the way. I mean, you know, being vegan is is of course an advantage, right? right? Sure. Like just across like all the various like all of those elements. I probably would have had a way harder time if I was still eating animal products. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
but overall yeah if you're if you're doing prep i know some people thrive on you know competing and everything and that's amazing you know um i i just don't really have that strict um militant sort of um like if i have to measure my food every day I, I just, I'm just not the type of person to do it. There are people who, who, who Too love, time who consuming. love to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it before. Calories and I'm and like, like this, this, this. I'm like, this is too time consuming. I'm like, this <laughs> yeah. is ridiculous. I'm just going to estimate it. And usually yeah, you yeah, underestimate more than you actually overestimate, I find sometimes. Depends on what yeah. it is. Right. It Pe- peanut butter, yeah. I always underestimate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, 5,000 calories. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, it's a tablespoon. Yeah. It's like yeah, four sure. tablespoons. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Heaping. <laughs> n- sure no, I, I find long. if I want to lose weight, cut out the peanut butter, and all of a oh, sudden dude. I magically start losing weight. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, great. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. It happens so quick. Nuts are very... They're, the calorie dense foods you take away and you fill it with less calorie dense foods, but, yes, but more satiating right? foods like, you know, yes. more greens, more grains, more yes. things like that. Oh my whole God, foods yes. right yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the more whole foods plant based I eat, the leaner I can get. Right. Absolutely. Reduce your sugar intake, you know, as well. Yes. And, I mean, even alcohol, right? Like, yep. you do sad and yep, it's magic. Sure. You feel yep. so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maria, there's this myth that it's harder for people to build muscle mass. Oh, that, no. Like, don't consume any animal products, right? Like, I thought um, that was the truth. Oh, wait, is it the myth? Is it the truth? Well, for some people, it's the truth, <laughs> um, right? Some people believe it is the truth and not a myth. No way. Right? But how oh, can no our way. listeners... Maybe not in 2020. ...gain more muscle <laughs> yeah. muscles on a plant-based diet, in your opinion? Yeah. Well, if you, if you actually look at what the nutritional profile of uh, meat is, it's only about 30% protein. A lot of it is mostly fat, and that's the fat that clogs our arteries. It's just that we have been um, led to believe that if you take a hunk of flesh, you think of it as just pure protein, like 100% protein. Yeah, right. There are, yeah. Are, there, there, there's <laughs> vegan food products out there like textured, vet, uh, te- textured vegetable protein, like TDP. That's way higher in actual protein, um, like, uh, percentages, content, yeah. right? In, in percentage, exactly. Yeah. The ratio, like the macro ratio is way higher. And what else is there? Like seitan and tofu is, is actually higher than, uh, than meat as well. So if you're actually just looking at the pure numbers, dude, even spinach and kale are higher in protein in amino acids right, than so beef many or chicken. Sources. People so many doing, sources. Right? Yeah. And, and it's they actually taste so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and you can flavor however you want and honestly like i have not ever i have not in the over four years craved any meat you know because yeah, whatever whatever yeah, you yeah. whatever you think you're missing is literally not that hunk of decaying flesh it's not that it is the oils it's the salt it's the sugars it's whatever the spices and seasonings you're using you know to flavor it with so if you want to mimic that flavor, you, you just add whatever, like just cook it and prepare it the way you would with meat, yeah, right? right. And, and, and that's what all these like new restaurants and, and chains and like amazing chefs and people around the world like doing plant-based and creating all these amazing innovative meals. Like you can literally have the same meal, but just without having someone to die right so exactly yeah. do, you, do you have like a quick tip how people can build muscle mass quickly if they follow all these like <laughs> you know what? vegan okay. protein sources Consist- consistency exercise wi- wise I like mean, consistency okay. is key definitely right definitely are there any like, exercises you would recommend oh my god yes <laughs> um okay wow okay it depends on what the goals are like if you're looking for sure. fat loss and i would definitely recommend that this is like something that i've just come back to over the years um i i usually recommend um doing heavy sets say um for me i'm trying to build my bum okay uh so i i do heavy uh barbell hip thrust and then i superset that with a weighted plyometric set so you're getting that some slow like muscle tearing um like total depletion um from the heavy lifts but then you go right into your fast switch muscle fibers and then you do explosive, like very speed and power um, focused uh, training. And so that way you're able to generate 
um, that strength and power, but also build the muscle that you need. Because like, I'm more of a, uh, like, I like to combine training protocols into more of a hybrid system. Right. And so if you, if you do strict bodybuilding, you know, you only do bodybuilding, you don't really focus on training your other aerobic systems. You don't focus on doing more athletic conditioning. Yeah. Right. Like endurance you know, too, right? Like if you, exactly. Like endurance, running. like literally, yeah, running. Well, in practicality, um, bodybuilding is not very, you know, practical in the real world. Oh, dude, no way. Because you're just building yeah. a bunch of muscle that, you know, but then it's you like, don't even have whoops, really, yeah, it, it doesn't but have the endurance. Functionally, like, yeah. Totally. I love how eclectic you are, you know, you like, you have so many different interests, you know, and that's, I think, the way to go. Mm -hmm. Not just like focusing on one thing too much, you yeah, know, like you have no. a nice balance of different things that's ideal yeah, like at least for me i life. love that it's yeah, better for your health too exactly right? oh my keeping God, it yes. balanced exercise it's, it's cardio amazing. yeah because, yeah. because yeah. i i have clients who are like in their 40s or 50s some in their in their um, 60s and you know like they start looking younger when yeah. they like after like months of training and then you, you look at them you're like holy sh holy cow like this lady and i have other clients comment on them clients who are younger and they're like you look like you're 40 but she's actually 50 because wow. her face is just glowing that and she looks excellent. she's like my weight she's like 111 pounds now you know what i mean like and it's muscle it's not just wasting away like anorexic or just not eating like she's fully vibrantly healthy and strong and that's thanks the kind you. of goal yeah thanks yeah, to you. I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> gold medal so thankful. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, like the um if, if i were to try to um Uh, suggest anything for anybody um, it would be to just listen to your heart and see what the universe really wants you to do because like you know a lot of us are like where I was like six, six years ago I was miserable I was so depressed and I didn't even know it you know mm. and I, I and I thought this was it like I thought me having couple tunnel I was like do I have another 40 years of this like this kind of like week you know Monday to Friday just doing the grind like week after week after week and then one day you're like What the hell have I done with my life, right? Mm -hmm. So life is too short not to go and just try things. Right. If you want to go do something, just go go try it. And if you fail, like I failed at many things. Like I just recently got scammed by somebody in marketing. Mm -hmm. Like I oh, failed no. at Bitcoin, you know, but then you just take the <laughs> loss. And you we, we failed and you too. Welcome to the club. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But these are valuable experiences, and without them, like you won't grow as a person. Exactly. The more you fail, what? actually, the those are how you, get. you learn. That's, that's exactly it's about learning. You know, you can go learning. to school, but you won't learn the experiences, right? Yes. You right. get out of school, yes. and they're like, "So what can you do?" <laughs> well, I can do mathematical equations, or I can do philosophy, and they're like, "Well, yes. how does that apply to my job?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you're gonna have to yes. go do more schooling. Like same with me, oh I got my, my schooling, I got into my job, and they're like. So you're gonna have to go get all this because, like, we don't know oh what God. you can do, what you can't do. So, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, okay. geez. yeah. yeah. So. But life is the best teacher. Yeah, it is. Like, it yeah. is. And you got to yeah. stay positive, right? Even if we have yes! all these bad experiences, like you need to be your self motivator in life. Like no one else yes. can motivate you as well as you do because oh you know God. yourself the best, right? And you should yes. know yourself the best if you don't. You know, like yes. really explore yourself. Like to the best yeah. you can, you know, and know and yourself. That's how you can yes. defeat like the worst yes. things in your life. You defeat should have, a, you should be on your own podcast. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, I know with, I'm mean, in the acting world and I know that's oh, like how I it see. works. You know, you got every mm -hmm. the million doors shut, you know, couple open. Yeah. You just got to yeah. push into people that, are, That exactly. We're close to fame or close to getting, you know, known. You, they you they yeah. quit too soon, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then you yeah, never you know where you're going to go. So. But it's with yes. so many things in life. Like, yeah, you that waste, applies with everything. You waste okay. your life if you're too depressed in life, I find, because you're not really living your life. You just no. miss out exactly. on the real life, what's happening the, around exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. And life can be whatever you make of it. Like, it, it can be literally whatever. Like, there's so much magic that happens and. And we just don't even acknowledge it because we're too scared to to even consider that like there's more to it than just the five senses. Exactly, But, right. man. No, yeah. exactly. Speaking about life, do you have any uh, mm -hmm. exciting future plans ahead of you? And well, where can the listeners find you? 
Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. For I would training love to connect with tips. people for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, this, this year I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to shift to more, um, of an online approach. So trying to get myself like, um, to build a more of a brand, um, as a, as a vegan trainer and as a vegan influencer, blah, 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 all that stuff. So that's actually a big learning curve for me because, um, I'm definitely not like a tech savvy person. Right. Um, that's kind of one of the bigger goals for this year. I had originally wanted to open my own studio, but then I looked at the numbers and I talked to a couple of lenders and they're like, yeah, you're going to have to um, pay back like $70,000 of interest. Like if we lend you this money and it'll be over five years. So I was like, right. okay, the Vancouver market, you know, like, <laughs> you know, think things are good. Like, you know, we have lots of clients flowing in, but like, to put that kind of financial burden on yourself is just not a piece of, it's not a smart thing to do right. in, in this market. And, you know, I, I don't want one bad decision to undo all the past years of hard work. Right. So I'm just right. like planning things out a little bit more str- str- strategically. That's good. Um, yeah. And also just kind of, um, cause for the past, you know, for most of my twenties, like the past, like, I don't know, seven, eight years. Like I've never been to Europe. I've never oh, been you to gotta Asia. Go. Yeah. Go to Berlin. Yeah, like, I'm from that's one Europe, of our favorite. So. Yeah, Julia's oh, yeah. from Berlin. So. Yeah. I grew up in wow. Berlin. Wow. I'm German yeah, Italian, so. but yeah, I grew up mostly in nice. uh, Berlin. Yeah. Berlin's Berlin's got a good go. vegan scene. It's the number one oh, my vegan God, scene. Yes. I mean some Yo, people say yes. no, it's Paris or London. No. I've been to these well, places. It can be but all of them, whatever. Berlin like, is like the Mecca <laughs> for that though. You walk oh, down the street and it's just vegan this, vegan that. Like that's the name of their place. Okay, that's so exciting. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put that on my list. Yeah. And like, you know, yeah. the media, the German media is so amazing. Like they, they promote like veganism so much because oh. they know like this, this is so political too, you know, that's the yes. right thing to do. So why not yes. even putting it exactly. out in the media, you know? So yeah. they're really open-minded to it now. That's amazing. That it's You know what? There's such a global shift going on, like, the planet is really raising its entire consciousness, like the collective consciousness. It's, it's really happening. Mm-hmm. That's so heartening. Yeah. Yeah, right. So Isn't it amazing? It's especially in 2020, mm-hmm. it's like, wow, it's like. Yes, it's such a powerful number. Right. It's such oh. a ripple effect happening here, you know? We're so yes. excited and we're excited to, to see your life journey, you know, be it on Instagram or. If yes. we see you at like Monica's uh, tea event, high or tea maybe events. A veg expo yes. on yeah. Stage oh again. yeah, right. We saw you at the <laughs> Veg Expo. So, yeah, it's just yes. amazing to see so many inspiring people like you, you know, shining like a star. And, and you guys, yeah, like just creating this platform to connect in a community. Like, that's really, like, it's, it's, it's really valuable. And, it's, it, it, and, I, and I'm actually so thankful for having me on. No. Thanks, really us too. Yeah, thanks. You know, yeah. We just love like your journey. You know, you're such an inspiration mm. for people, and to not ever give up. You know, no matter what yeah. life throws you, no, mm-hmm. no, no, no. Keep on doing what you're doing, and I just see yeah. a bright future for you. Like it's just getting oh, better. You just that. you just started. You know, and it's just yeah, get exactly more exciting. Exactly. Like you have a good yeah, attitude yeah, yeah. towards life. Yes. So, that's great. Yeah, it's all love. Yeah, love for others, love for the self. That's excellent. Well, thanks so much yeah. for your time. We know you're super busy, and uh, Aww, we hope I you enjoy it. the rest of your day. Thank and you. You too. We see you. You guys are amazing. Yes, thanks, hopefully you too. I see you soon. For sure. Sounds are you nice. at the <laughs> Veg Expo in May? Um, I'm definitely going to be there. I haven't talked to the owner um, yet. I haven't talked to him or anything, so I'm not sure exactly... Um, if I'm going to be doing anything or I'm just going to go and actually get to enjoy like walking around and stuff like that, that would yeah, be awesome. Right? That would be <laughs> nice yeah. too. That'd be a nice yeah. change, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How you feel. Hang, hang out with friends. Yeah. yeah totally. Exactly. All yeah. right. Well, we talk soon yeah. and uh, okay. keep up the vegan power. Yeah, keep up yeah, the definitely. For sure. spirit and yes. keep moving forward, right? Yes, yes. Definitely. Same, same to you. Thank you Thanks. very much. Take care. Oh, thank Take you. Care. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Ciao. Take care.